Now, in order to apply this idea of using those three simple uh, types of operations, namely uh, elementary operations, we're going to first of all simplify the notation. Now, so we're dealing with a system that looks like this. By the way, I'm showing you a system of three equations in three variables. Of course, nothing changes in what I'm going to say if, you're, if we're dealing with a system with a different number of variables and or equations. Okay? So first of all, notice that what we can do is we can make the notation a little bit simpler, simpler by dropping a few things. First of all, we can drop the brace, right? We know it's a system, right? So we don't need that brace to let us know that we need those three equations together as long as we remember that we do. Secondly, we don't need to actually write down the variables. Okay, all we need to do is remember that they are there. The x is all in uh, in the first uh, place, corresponding to the a one whatever. Uh, the y corresponds to the other coefficients, and the z corresponds to the other coefficients. Okay, so as long as we remember to keep the coefficients in order, then we can drop the variables. And finally, once we drop the variables, that's not really an equation anymore. So what we can do is we can drop the pluses. Uh, or the minuses, or, or not the minuses, sorry, just the pluses, so the addition signs. So the coefficients, if the coefficient is negative, we want to keep the negative with the coefficient, and we're going to keep the constants at the end. And maybe just to be um, on the safe side, just to make sure that we don't confuse this set of numbers now with something else. So as uh, aeronautical engineers would say, make sure you're at the fuselage so people don't fall off. We're going to put some brackets around them, okay? And if we want, we can put a line to distinguish the part of the of this new notation that corresponds to where the variables are from the constants. Okay, that line is actually optional. Sometimes we will use it. Sometimes we will not. Okay, so this is a simpler. Uh, form of the same system, so it's just different notation. It's basically just says the the same thing. Okay, and what we have constructed is pretty much a matrix. In fact, this particular thing is called the augmented matrix of the system. I'm going to explain to you in a minute why augmented. Uh, but again, what we do is every time we have a system, we can very easily construct its augmented matrix by again dropping the braces, dropping the x's, y's, and z, and all the variables, and just keeping the coefficients and the constants on the other side, and dropping the equal as well. Okay. Now, what are the advantages of doing that? Well, for one thing, there's less stuff to write. We are uh, omitting all the x's, y's, and z all the time, or omitting all the pluses which we don't need, and so on and so on. The second thing is now we're focusing on the coefficients, which are, which are really the things that we need to worry about and we need to manipulate in order to get to the answer. Okay? Uh, all the, the rest of the, of the notation of a system is really not that important. And finally, uh, we can actually, by using this notation, we can actually handle the elementary operations more easily. And in fact, we are going to change the name of those operations from just elementary operations to elementary row operations. Why? Well, because of course there is a strong connection between a system and its augmented matrix, and it's time to look at that a little bit more in depth. So here we have a system, and uh, just to keep it a little bit more general, I'm changing the, the variables to x1, x2, x3, hinting that there might be more, and therefore I'm changing also the coefficients. Well, actually, I'm not changing. We're using the same coefficients, a11, a12. Notice that the subscripts uh, that I'm attaching to the coefficients uh, are divided into two parts. Uh, for instance, the first uh, um, coefficient that we see, a11, that's not really an a11. It's an a11 meaning that uh, the, this coefficient is in the first equation corresponding to the first variable. The coefficient next to it, a12, is the coefficient in the first equation corresponding to the second variable, and so on and so on. Now, uh, as I said, systems and their augmented matrices correspond to each other in a, a, a perfect way. In fact, given one, you can always construct the other. In what way? Well, first of all, each row of the matrix represents an equation. So the top equation of the system is exactly has the same information as the top row of the corresponding matrix. And then if I look down to the second equation of the system, that corresponds to the second row of the matrix, and so on and so on. What about the columns? Each column of the matrix is going to represent one variable or the column of constants. So for instance, 
the um, the first uh, column there in the system, the column co co containing all the x1 uh, terms, corresponds to the first column in the matrix. If I can move that, if I move down to the second column in the system, namely the one that consists of all the terms uh, involving x2, that corresponds to the second column of the matrix, and so on and so on. Um, also, we're going to say that two matrices are equivalent if their associated systems are equivalent, which means, of course, that the associated system have exactly the same set of solutions. Okay? So, once again, for now, these matrices are really just a nice, convenient way to represent a, a system. They contain all the information of the system, and the system can be obtained from the matrix if I give it the augmented matrix to begin with.